We are the plug for producers, the Show Lab Producer Podcast. You dig? This show has been brought to you by SacredApparel.net. The homie Twink and the crew over there are always coming up with the latest fashions, the tees, the hoodies, and the hats. Right now, they got a store-wide sale going on, everything 20% off. This would be a great time to pick up a hoodie. Everything 40% off, regular price $40, now they $25 a hoodie. And the dope thing that I like about Sacred Apparel, they got tees for the big home. So go check them out. SacredApparel.net, a clothing store for the ladies and gentlemen that choose to live sacred. You dig? your next banger well check out the team over at soundhbeats.com looking for a variety of production well the homie ran the crew over there can take care of all of your musical needs they got exclusives leases and they got a clearance sale over there are your artists on a budget well now they are offering bulk discount prices on their lease beats so what you waiting on head on over to soundhbeats.com and pick up your banger today. Christian music, all heart. Soundhbeats.com. You are listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast. The podcast that's strictly for producers. Five, four, three, two, one. This should be played at high volume. You ain't got the answers. Yo, yo, what's good? Yo, yo, hey, yo, what's poppin'? This your boy Swift. Young Joshua. This is Surface. This your man, K-Drama. This is the Amazing SB, and you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast. And you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast. And you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast. You are now listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast. And you're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast with my man Marv. With my homie Marv. With my homie Marv. With my man Marv from OB. <laughs> I'm a mom from a beats, baby, yeah. You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing <laughs> but producer stuff. You dig? <laughs> yo. Yo, yo, yo. What up? It's your boy, Marl from Beach. You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, where we talk about nothing but producer stuff. Yeah, dig. How y'all doing, man, for this Tuesday afternoon, man? It is beautiful out here in the sunny hill country of Texas. Uh, that's where I reside. Uh, today is a good day, man. Uh, today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will, I will rejoice in it and be glad somebody didn't wake up he gave me grace and mercy to do it one more time and uh i am forever grateful for that man anyway man you're listening to the show lab producer podcast uh we got a great show lined up man this show has this show stemmed from about four or five conversations that i had like in a three-week period period sorry and we're talking about the hustle and grind the hustle and grind as producers uh the question has been how did you get started how did this happen blah 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 yada 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 the hustle and grind has to be real so that's what we're talking about man and i have a friend of mine he's an artist producer and sound design sound designer the good homie j57 He's going to be on the show, and we're going to talk about uh, what the hustle and grind looks like for him, man. This guy has his hands in a whole bunch of bags, man. Uh, he's <laughs> he's always on the go. Even being sick, <laughs> like we did this interview, man, he has a cold, but, you know, he, the grind doesn't stop, man. That's a part of it, you know, always uh, being vig- visible, you know what I'm saying, uh, putting yourself out there. Your name should be a household name You know what I'm saying uh, I go different places and have my hat on People can relate. They can, they can 
they know my logo so when they see the hat there's oh that's more so uh that's what we talking about man uh before we get into that we got to open this thing up with a scripture actually i'm gonna do uh this devotion is derived is coming from a scripture ecclesiastes ecclesiastes uh chapter 10 verse 18 and the devotion reads laziness is not just an attitude it is a lack of action. It is, it is a choice to let important matters suffer neglect. While the result, I'm sorry, while the results of this choice may not always be evident, over the passage of time, the basic results of idleness are borne out by the accumulating signs of decay and destruction. Lazy is not just an attitude, it is an action. <laughs> I don't even think I need to explain that. Man don't work, man don't work, man don't eat. You know, uh, in the book of Proverbs, uh, Solomon was saying, man, we can learn lessons from the ants. How they come together and they gather up their food for the winter time. So by the time, the winter, t- by the time winter come, they good. But they hustling and grinding during the summer. You might see, uh, you, we be laughing at the little ants because they be carrying stuff on their back. But they are storing up their food for when that see, when that winter time come. They are gravy. Laziness, laziness is not just an attitude; it is a lack of action. And that devotion is coming from Ecclesiastes chapter ten, verse eighteen. We talking about the hustle and grind. If you think <laughs> you're going to pop off without it, you need to sell your equipment. Sell your equipment, sell your laptop, uh, sell your software, because uh, you ain't going to get past that hustle and grind. We got a great show coming up, man. I'm excited for this information that my guy, J57, is going to drop on y'all. I'm telling y'all, you're going to really enjoy this joint. Uh, so we're going to get into it in a few minutes This show has been brought to you by SacredApparel.net SacredApparel.net My man My man Twink He always be on that hustle and grind He coming up with some Dope tea every other week Go check him out SacredApparel.net We are the plug for producers The Show Lab Producer Podcast you dig? Are you a producer or artist that is lacking confidence in your music? Well, now you can get your music critiqued by Industry Vet. The Amazing Beat Critique by Producer Vet, The Amazing SB. Get your one-on-one video consultation via Skype or FaceTime. Submit three beats or three songs, and he will provide feedback and any questions that you may have pertaining to your music or the industry. So contact The Amazing SB today at AmazingBeatCritique at gmail.com. Again, that's AmazingBeatCritique at gmail.com. Contact him and book your session today. Are you working on a project and you're looking for your next banger? Well, check out the team over at SoundHBeats.com. Looking for a variety of production? Well, the homie Ray and the crew over there can take care of all of your musical needs. They got exclusives, leases, and they got a clearance sale over there. Are your artists on a budget? Well, now they are offering bulk discount prices on their lease beats. So what you waiting on? Head on over to SoundHBeats.com. And pick up your banger today. Christian music, all heart. SoundHBeats.com. We are the plug for producers for the Show Lab Producer Podcast. Yes, sir. You're listening to the Show Lab Producer Podcast, man. I'm your boy, Mark from Beats. And we are talking about the hustle and grind as, as a producer, uh, how necessary it is. Um, that's a part of this journey that you are not going to be able to um, pass by. <laughs> you got to have this grind. And uh, I'm honored and uh, I'm happy to have uh, 
artist, producer, and sound designer, uh, my guy, J57. Welcome to the show. What up, bruh? Yo, Mark. What's up, man? Thank you for having me on the show. Man, I appreciate you uh, taking out your time, man. I know you're feeling under the weather, um, but the grind don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> True, and I appreciate you having me. No doubt, man. Well, we're talking about today, man, we we talking about the, the epitome of the hustle and grind. Um you know, it's, it's something that we have to do to be successful in uh, what we do uh, as a producer, man. You know, I've had this conversation about four or five times with like uh, two, three different, about five different producers that are trying to start in a business. And it was like, man, man, how do you do this? How do you do that? You know what I'm saying? And um my answer to them is that you can't get away from the grind. You know what I'm saying? It is necessary, you dig? So uh, before we get into that, I just would like for you to introduce yourself to the listeners. Let them know who you are and what you're doing, all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm J57. I'm an MC producer, born and raised on Long Island, uh, lived in Brooklyn for 10 years. And, you know, uh, I guess as a producer, my credits are from... Ranging from Wu Tang to mm -hmm. Joey Badass to Action Bronson to uh, like a million other people that I can't think of off the top of my head, like Joey right. Tees. Um, I don't know. This is, like I've worked with a lot of people. You know, I'm from New York and definitely it, entrenched in that New York scene, and I know a lot of people. And then also on the West Coast, you know, I have albums out with you know Blame One, and I have remixes and songs with Blue and Blue and Exile and. You know, um, Aloe Black. So I, you know, it's just I, I, I definitely uh, put a, put my uh, time into that stuff. So I guess that's a decent, you know, part of my uh, my resume. And I guess I'm lucky enough to uh, to have worked at Fat Beats Records, the legendary hip hop store in New mm -hmm. York City, where I met a lot of my idols like Cool Herc and Eminem. Mm. And, you know, mentors like DJ Premier and Marco Polo. Right, right, right. Um, man, that's what's up, man. How long have you been producing in total? Uh, I've been making beats since 2003, so like January 03 is when I started using Reason. So mm. I, I guess that's 13, almost 14 years. Okay, okay. All right, man. Um, so you, you, you start, you, well, let's back up. Let's talk about the whole artist part of it first before we get into the producing part. Because, um, uh, uh, as you say, man, you are an artist. Uh, how did yep. the whole rap scene, how did that whole scene, how did that whole bug start for you? Oh, uh, I mean, back in high school, you know, in the, in the late 90s, I was really young in high school. And I guess I, I just started freestyling and writing little raps and stuff, but never really showing anyone. But I would freestyle with my friends and beatbox and ciphers and stuff, which led to me producing, actually. My homie Haikyuu, who's a dope MC producer I still work with till this day, um, he was one of my best friends in high school. And, you know, we used to skateboard together. We used to cipher and battle people together with our crew and stuff like that. And he, he used to be like, yo, you should, you should really start making beats like your beatboxing is dope and he said that all through high school and I didn't take him seriously until my second year of college and that's when I started making beats but rapping you know I've been doing that since 98 so I was you know I was dumb young and I've been still you know just really just plugging away at sharpening my sword in the in the, the realm of lyricism wow that's what's up man um so you being an artist slash producer um where in the in in the midst of the hustle, uh, where do you where's that balance come in at? You know what I'm saying? Uh, or, or, or let me let me say it let me say it this way: um, What has been more of the priority, uh, and what's been the latter? If that makes Ooh. sense. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great question, actually. I, people rarely ask anything remotely close to what you ask, and I love that question because it's a really good one. Because mm -hmm. you know. Rapper producers are kind of a dime a dozen, yeah, but a lot of them are either okay at one and really good at the other. Not right. a lot of them are 50-50, like I'm 50-50, you know what I mean? So, and that's, and, and be, with that being said, I, that's how I live my days, you know, like for, I mean, a good portion of me making beats, majority of that time was spent in, in the lab making 10 beats plus a day for the first couple of years of making beats with no days off from that. I would make 10 plus beats a day, just learning, you know, there was a lot of 
crappy stuff. There was a lot of great stuff. There was a lot of potentially great stuff. Just learning that way. And then, uh, you know, rapping took a real backseat for a bunch of years. I still did it, but only minimally. And then, um, I guess, in comparison to my, my production grind, really. And then, um, I guess, maybe like five, yeah, like about four or five years ago, I got the bug again to want to rap more. And I kind of hit my 10,000 hours production-wise, and I'm starting to, as an, as an MC, being that I took so many years off from making that the main goal you know um and then i got better and better at that you know on top of it i was progressing still as a producer you know diving more into about 09 is when i started really diving into sample free stuff but by 2011 2012 that's you that's, that's pretty much where i wanted to go harder as an mc like my sample free game was starting to get to the point where everything i was doing sample free was was actually good mm. and uh, not not like one out of ten you know like one out of ten of them were really good you know what i mean for a while right. but uh around then so i guess from like 2012 2013 i started doing it 50 50 and then by i want to say late 2014 is when everything i wrote was good and everything i made production wise was good and that so for almost for actually for two years now i've been in this zone where everything i do is going to be quality because of my skill level of what i you know which i created and my obvious god given god given talent which i'm lucky to have and great right. to have right but my work ethic is the skill and that's what i brought myself to to that level with so now I'm now I'm at this place in this place where, you know, like like you were saying earlier, I'm sick right now, so I didn't really make anything today because right. I don't want to force anything. I, you know, but you know when I feel better, I'm definitely you know whatever I feel like doing. If I want to make a beat, I'm gonna make a beat. If I want to write a song or a verse or even some lines and come up with a flow, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. I'll just do that. So it, it, right now I'm in this amazing zone where all I can do is just create and and everything's keeper, you know, keep worthy and. I kind of take it from there. Right, right. Uh, it's good when everything is keep worthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It took a lot of years to get there, I'll tell you that. Yeah, man, because sometimes you could be in a space where you be like, oh, man, this is whack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, real quick, what were you going, what were you uh, majoring in college? Uh, my major was communications as oh, okay. well as, and then also marketing. So like that was the minor slash really was like, I was like a class away from making it a double major and I didn't want to do that because I did, you know, my first year of college is when I realized I wanted to go for it as a musician, as an artist, as a rapper. And right. cause I wasn't even making beats yet. So I was just a rapper. And, uh, you know, like I think it was like my fourth day of college and I was like, uh, I don't know what I signed up for because I really just want to do music. So then I was like, let me kind of pimp the system. Let me do let me do school. <laughs> you know, what I mean, not even as a plan B, like it really wasn't. It right. was just as let me see what I could do and make, you know, make some family members happy for going and stuff. And not that anybody was ever pressuring about it. They were actually very cool and still very supportive. And I'm so grateful to this day. But, you know, it was um, I, I got to you know learn a lot of communications about how to speak properly like and you know i learned a lot about nonverbal communication which really helps in your meeting with somebody and you know whatever else and i learned uh, a ton about marketing how to apply what i learned in college to my music eventually right. inevitably is what i did right right and i i guess that's a good segue into my next question as you uh you was mentioning uh your um made marketing was one of your majors um how important was the internet for you as a producer and an artist because um, that's, that that's you know when i when i'm talking to people man i'm talking to different cats uh when i was t actually having these conversations last week i was telling dudes like man your internet presence has to be you know it has to be popping you know what i'm saying don't expect yeah. nobody to go to your soundcloud page if you're not even posting a link <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm and when right. i started out my space and sound click was real big and i used to hustle that mug to death you know <laughs> so how how important was the internet and how did you navigate through it and make it work for you okay well i mean i you know you and i have spoke about spoken about this prior because you know we always build but <laughs> right. i mean soundcloud i mean sound click i'm sorry sound click I, I just missed that generation i wasn't really internet savvy i wasn't or maybe i was on you know going to for hip-hop forums and learning about what music's coming out and mm -hmm. whatever else but i wasn't really up on putting my music out like that yeah, until right. myspace yeah. and then the myspace time like you know that era i went pretty hard with that and uh like even like my home like some of my homies right now 
they heard about my old stuff when I went by J Logic. They heard about that stuff from MySpace, and it wasn't like big. I didn't, yeah, I didn't have like six figure plays or anything crazy. But I, I guess they got out there enough where like some people heard, and they didn't really keep up because I ended up changing my name, you know, mm-hmm. and whatever else. But. I mean, MySpace was a real big platform for me and my old crew, and yeah. you know, we used that yeah. as a way to get out there. And, and uh, I'm pretty sure I've met a few people, maybe one or two people there that like, I'm still down with mu- music-wise. I'm just trying to think of like who it could be, <laughs> you know. But right, um, you know that 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 helped a lot. And then um, then when I formed my group, Brown Bag All Stars, comprised of a bunch of the guys that I worked with at Fat Beats Records, you know, we we used MySpace pretty heavily, and that helped us really, you know, get out there internationally. And then and, you know, a little bit. And then after that, step two was us doing um, shows around the city, which was, uh, which kind of helped. It helped us that we worked at the record store because we sold our CD there and we just sold it in a brown bag, which actually shouts to Killer Mike. He's mm-hmm. the one who gave us the idea to do that. So you, right. you put the CD in a brown bag, write brown bag all stars on a sticker, close the bag with that. And that's what we did. And we, there was a lot of mystique behind it. And people were just buying the CD. And we never said it was good or bad. We didn't say we were in it. We just were like, oh, I don't know about that CD when they asked us. And they would buy it because of how it looked. And it was a cheap price. And started a buzz for us around New York City. And then we mm-hmm. started doing a ton of gigs. And that helped a lot, too. But then to bring it to the next level, we wanted to get outside of New York. Then we were local guys that were doing really cool stuff. And that was definitely the goal. But we wanted to bring it to another level. And that's when we had to get our stuff together and really make sure our online presence was really, you know, clean and and look good and easy to navigate. And people could find the music and let the music be the business card. And that's when we we just cared about the songs. And we went and, you know, started putting our music out and, you know, submitting it to blogs and stuff like that. And came up with a whole game plan and a campaign and it worked. And, you know. You know, I was doing a show once in Switzerland where a kid came to buy a CD for me and was like, telling me he likes my music and these remixes I've done for people and whatever. And I'm like, yo, how do you hear about me? And he's like, two dope boys. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, just the, that's just one example of something right. like that happening. So that kind of stuff really does get in. My man, DJ Element, he just got off of a European tour with Homeboy Sandman. He said every city and every country that they went to for, they were gone for weeks. So like, every single place, somebody, he had fans there and they would come up to him and be like, we heard about you on hip hop. DX, we heard about you on Not Right, whatever, like those sites. And it's like, wow, so the blogs play a real big key in getting your music out there. So get your stuff together and, and do it that way would be my advice. <laughs> right. Hey, man, you know, I'm uh, as I'm listening to you, man, and it's something that uh, that uh, comes, to, comes to mind. Now, considering that you had a whole bunch of, you know, you met a whole bunch of people when you was working over at Fat Bees and you had these connections, how important is it for a producer to... To invest uh, in promoting and marketing the music because you know, of course, blogs and some forums are not um, not cheap. You know, do you think that's a benefit to do, or is it the way the internet is these days? They can, you know, create a buzz. You know, without the other forms. I mean, what's your what's your spill on that? Well, I mean, just to specify, you mean for a producer or like... Yeah, for a producer. Now, I mean, for artists, it's it's almost like a no-brainer, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But even for producers, man, you know, because... In this in this in this day and age, man, a producer is almost like an artist. Especially, yes, that's a great point. <laughs> you know that's a saying? really good point. You know, I think about people like Jay Diller. You know what I'm saying? Like when you listen to his beat tape, it is not just like. These instrumentals, these mugs are created like as if somebody's talking on these joints. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the producer has almost became the artist today. So how is it important or is it uh, necessary for, you know, a producer that may want to promote their beats on other sites and stuff? And should they invest in doing that? You know what I'm saying? What's your take on that? Uh, that's a great question. I think um, nobody's ever asked me that in all my interviews. <laughs> By the way, that's a good one. <laughs> I think you know what? I think I can only talk from my experience. I could I could speak from my experience, and I could tell you from the trial and error I've seen other people do. If you're a producer and you want to get out there and you want to go the route of investing in yourself and or getting your stuff, trying to get your stuff on blogs or whatever else, I mean, the thing that helped me. And the reason I'm more, you know, slightly more known as a producer than as an, a, you know, an artist mm-hmm. before it was like, before it was night and day, like I was only known as a producer for years, but now it's like, you know, like we're, you know, it's a hair away from each other now. But the reason that of that being was I had so many credits as a producer and 
A lot of it was me building my own buzz, me featuring my homies from New York. Like I was dropping singles where it's J57. I didn't rap on these songs though. Right. I was taking, you know, I was a little little rapper hiatus at that point, really focusing on the production kind of uh-huh. thing in the early like 2010s. And it's like, you know, a joint feature in uh, Mayhem Loren, Action Bronson, Mappy Regazino, and Rashid Chappelle uh, called Main Event. Like that single was huge. That was a big mm-hmm. deal for me. It was, they were playing it very heavily on Hot 97. They were. It was on all the all the biggest blogs worldwide. Right. And it was it's you know it streamed a ton it was it was a big deal i you know i'm from new york i paid my dues i you know i'm in a position where i, I worked out for a million years so i was able to get a song like that for free right. but it would be but it would it would behoove the the producer to try to pay a feature if they don't have those connections if they lived in Kansas or some random place like that, which <laughs> they could still make it. They could right. still make it. I mean, look at Tech Nine, obviously from Kansas City. But oh, I mean, like Tech is killing, bro. Like he, he is Tech is the, the epitome epi- of killing it. He, <laughs> you look, you took the word epitome right out of my mouth, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and with no label. Right, crazy. And that, he did, yo, he did it. They could do it too. So when I say yeah. that example, it wasn't to be funny. It was really, I mean, a, a little bit, but it was. It was mostly to be like, I don't care where you're from. Like, if you're from South Dakota, you right. could be the first producer from South Dakota to do it big. You just got to do it right. You got to, right. you know, like there's a. I got homies in the UK that are producers that that do big stuff like the purist man i met him when we were on tour in in the uk a couple years ago and mm-hmm. the purist he, he's smart man he goes and features all the newest cats that are popping he, he released a song with west side gun recently i remember danny brown he did a track with he did a bronson joint i think like mm. your old droog i think he might have done a joint with shouts mm-hmm. to him too like all these like new york cats that like i've known over the years whatever like he goes and gets all the, the newest like popping you know people mm-hmm. in the underground i guess and and does that and then he's able to build up his brand so if somebody in you know montana or something like that <laughs> like right. if they wanted to like they should reach out to them go through the proper channels reach out to the management of somebody who has a you know a great internet following and real life following where they actually pack in people you know what i mean but to these shows but that's something that i would recommend doing because me having features like i've had that's helped me a lot and it's given me a lot of it's built my brand it's it's strengthened everything i've done from the core pretty much right 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 Wow, man, that's what's up, man. That's some good information right there. Uh, going into another phase of your hustle, man, uh, sound designing. Uh, yes. I've had the pleasure to review actually all your stuff that in came yeah. over MachineMasters.com. If you don't uh, know, you can go pick up J57's, uh, both of his kits, over at MachineMasters.com right now. While we, while you listen to the podcast, you can go to Machine Masters and go pick them up. Let's <laughs> change yes, the plug real quick. Thank um, you very much. No doubt, man. Uh, how did that whole sound design and bug come about? Well, it was actually it's it's really cool because it's something I never thought about doing. Mm-hmm. Um, like I know people who do who've been doing the sound you know the sound pack kind of thing producers who've been doing that for a while. Like you know I've known Illmind for a bunch of years and my homie G Coop who has a ton of stuff out with um, with Jake One right. and then my my other homie Frank Dukes who's like he, he's murdering it as well. Like hey bro, those- hey hey br- bruh, Frank. Let me tell you. Some of my favorite sound designs And I'm not saying this just because I got you on the show But I really Love your kits I like your kits you, Your kits are like some of my main uh, Stuff that I'm using Because that's what I got in my possession But uh, Frank Dukes is one of my favorite sound designers uh, we, Oh yeah We said this in conversation uh, Last night but G Coop and Jake One, I have mm-hmm. all of the snare joints, and I have all of the sample kits that uh, Jake One and G Kit G Coop have put out. They're like some of my favorites too, bro. For real. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Like, I don't. You know, I don't really. You know, and I, I like Ill Mind too. I like Ill Mind, but your kids it's a different, and, and different G Coop and Jake Ones are, are some of my favorites right now. I really appreciate that, man. No and doubt, bro. I just, I, that means a lot, actually. And, and seeing what they've done, like you, the list you just ran up, like through of those guys, like the stuff they've done. Yeah. Like that's what made me kind of want to do it once I was approached, you know, to do so. Cause mm-hmm. I didn't really, I didn't think I could, you know what I mean? I just didn't even right. think about it, honestly. And then, um, shit, I mean, I mean, I know Ill Minds been doing it for a million years. Like I remember in 2010, I did one of the first black events he's ever did. I was a producer in it. And, 
he, you know, all the producers that were on it that were playing their beats and stuff, he gave them like all these DVDs that were just containing like mm. all these sounds and drum kits and whatever. I still have them and stuff, you know, like. Wow. I knew, I knew, I know he's been doing that, but I didn't, even, it didn't really become a thing that's really popping until the past couple of years. And, right. you know, I was do I did a, I did a video. You can see it on YouTube right now uh, on the spot. It was me and Damone Tyrell where mm -hmm. I was given, you know, it was through Machine Masters. Right. So shout, shout out, out to AG and AG Machine all day. Com. Exactly. And, you know, the, my homies at Dead End Hip Hop gave me the opportunity to do one of those uh, on the spot sessions. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was given samples right on the spot and, right. and I flipped them and I made three different movements. So it was three different, completely different beats. And then Damone had to just use it as a skate park and skate around <laughs> and do all right. the obstacles that I created. And he killed it. Right. That video did really, really well. And it did like tens of thousands of views. Oh, like, yeah. First week or two and yeah. I didn't expect that I would, I would have been happy with like 5,000 views or something I'd be like oh that was, that was pretty cool you know right but it, it like did t 10 times that immediately and we right. were all like wow this is cool and it caught the attention of AG and he really was like yo I really love this and thank you for promoting it and mm -hmm. a bunch of the blogs picked it up and posted it and stuff which I guess wasn't a normal occurrence mm -hmm. and he was just like yo I want to reach out to see if you want to do a drum kit and I was flattered and honored but I you know I, I'm not into doing the drum kit thing myself right like, I just you know, there's no pri there's no price in the world that I would ever sell my drums for because of how many years I've agonized like a like a like a psychopathic you know insane person who's <laughs> make, creating crafting this stuff by candlelight while he's right. like crying himself to sleep. That's how like arduous it was for me to to craft these drums and have men create that kind of stuff. So I was like, I'm, I'm like, I'll be honest, I'm not interested in doing that, but I'm beyond flattered and honored, and I would love to work with you in another out another outlet or something. And he was mm -hmm. like about some sound design kind of thing and I was like say no more fam <laughs> and I went and <laughs> created a uh, sound design one sent it to him uh, he, I know he pitched it to a few people to get the green light and right. uh, I heard through the grapevine you were one of them and gave me the, gave the thumbs up yeah 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 <laughs> yeah he, uh, he did send it to me and asked yeah. me to go through it uh, I don't and, and I, don't quote me on it but I don't even yeah. I, he may have no I think AG, he normally go, he has skimmed through the kit, but he has sent it to me or he has sent it to Hellfire to catch the do the reviews to thoroughly go through it. So when I got my hands on it, I said, AG, I said, tell Jay to go back and add the BP, BPMs to it. Oh, okay. And he'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, that was a game changer for me. I, yeah. From yeah. there on, I did BPMs on everything. And it, it I mean, as an MC, as a producer, when yeah. people ask me to do a remix, if they don't give me the BPM. You messed up. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, like, yeah. There's a, if, if there's samples involved in the original, like we're looking at, impo it's impossible for me to figure out what the BPM could yes. be and stuff. You know what I mean? Luckily, yeah. the shit, I'm doing sample free, like with these sounds, but. It's like BPMs are really imperative. So that yeah. was you. That was you right there. Okay, that was yeah. dope. Yeah, man. And I appreciate you know, that. Because I'm always looking at it from, you know, uh, how, how that benefits me in my work and my work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you may you may spend between five to five minutes to, you know, three, four hours yes. trying to figure <laughs> out a BPM for one song. You know what yep. I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was my only thing, man. And um, yeah, I, I'm I'm glad. Actually, your kit was the third kit that I that I did a review on when I first oh, wow. uh, became a part of uh, Machine Masters team. So, oh, that's yeah. cool. That's yeah, cool. man. No well, doubt. I appreciate those positive reviews you've you've always given me. It's yeah, and I, yeah. And I know you're not the type to to just say you like it if you don't, because you know I know your credits and stuff. So I appreciate that. Yeah, man. And you know, and I, I I try to be you know I try to be uh, honest, you know, and thorough as much as I can. You know what I'm saying, but I truly, honestly, man, I I love them joints. They had, I have oh, like this. You. I was telling a uh, sound oracle, uh, I was telling Anom anomaly a couple of months ago that I have this folder in my uh, on my on my iPad and my beat maker, and I have all. I, it's called the go to kits. Oh, your nice. kid, <laughs> your your kid is in there. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> his kids is is a gang of kids that's in my go to folder. Like help save the day when I'm in a situation, <laughs> <laughs> or if I need something real quick, you're in my go to folder, man. So, oh, that's yeah. cool. So and. and before we get out of here, man, uh, I got a got a couple more questions. Going back to the whole sound design aspect of it, 
uh, now that it's becoming this phenomenon and it's saturated, how do you, how, in the midst of everybody that's doing it, how do you differentiate, differentiate uh, your kids? You know what I'm saying? How do you continue to make them unique, you know, where they stand out and they don't kind of just like fall by the wayside? Mm. I mean, I think it's a lot like how I am as an MC. There were a lot of years where, you know, the, I wasn't into the voice I had and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I, I want to sound like different people and I would try to emulate it and whatever else. And even if it worked and people liked it, I still was trying to do what other people were doing. Right. So when it comes to these sound, like these sound packs and kits and stuff, like I, I know what other people are doing and like, you know, I got like I'm lucky to have homies that are very, very successful in that world. Like, like I've mentioned, Frank Dukes, Ilmine, mm -hmm. and Jiku, who I've known for a lot of years, and right. we have a lot of mutual respect for each other, and whatever else. So I already know what they do, and I'm like, you look at what Frank Dukes does, and you're like, damn, I, I'm not really trying to get a whole band over here to do some cool <laughs> stuff like he's doing. I think it's genius, but like I'm, I just don't have the the means of doing it in, right. in any aspect. I just don't have the mental capacity right now. Like he's on some genius stuff with that, so let him yeah. let him go do what he does. And that's not even really what I wanted to do to begin with. So I was like, you know what? As soon as I thought to myself, I'm like, how do I attack this now that AG gave me this this platform, you know, mm -hmm. this new this new channel to to you know do some stuff with? Like, how do what do I do? And right. the first day I was a little not stressed, but the first day I was racking my brain, and then I was like, you know what? Let's go back to what made me great as an MC. I just spoke from the heart and I did what I did and I, I just did my voice. I did what I did, you know? And mm. as soon as I did that, as soon as I applied that to the sounds that I was creating and treated these sounds like how I do if I was sitting down to make a beat or right. whatever, as soon as I started doing that, they were flowing. Like the first one, I, I knocked that out really relatively fast because of that. So, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like I just, as soon as I stepped back and just did whatever I wanted to do. Right. And it was well received by you and AG and the whole team. Yeah. As soon as that happened, I was like, all right, I know what I'm doing. And, right. and then they, they sold it and it did really well and got great reviews. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the, the feedback's been incredible. So I just did more of that for sound, sound design volume two that did the right. same exact formula. And I'll do it again for part three and maybe four if I ever do that one. Right. And the newest one. John Carpenter Jr., which is yeah, out right now. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that one. I mean, that's just another example of me just doing what I want to do. Because I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? I see people doing, you know, shouts to the homie Analogic. You know, I see mm -hmm. him doing specific, you know, specialty kind of packs right. where it's like this one is these. And you know, I see people doing all different stuff. Like this is the trap, you know, trap edition and this one's right. rock edition blah 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 and i'm like right. oh okay cool like let me do a little fun one for halloween let me knock this out real quick and see what people think right. and i was just like john carpenter's like obviously the pun of halloween all day being yes. the movies but i mean that guy was killing it when it came to halloween kind of sounds for oh yeah for, yeah yeah for cinema so i was like let me just emulate what he did but flip it my way and call it john carpenter jr and put it out just for the week of halloween and then take it off offline forever starting november 1st you know mm -hmm. so that was it as soon as i spoke from the heart from through these sounds and attacked it the way i normally attacked it you know from there on out i had my own formula it was just to do what i normally do and so that's what i recommend for people if they want to do their own thing to just focus on what what they want to do don't study what other people are doing anymore like don't do mm. that like just do what you want to do and i think it'll come off better wow man that's what's up man um if for those that's listening, man, that may, you know, that's, that's definitely encouraged by this podcast or somebody just run into you and ask you, you know, what I'm saying, yo, Jay, man, you know, what is the key to, you know, the success of a producer, man? In a few words, man, what, what would you tell an individual? Uh, I would tell them work ethic is key. You know, you got to. You're gonna get you're gonna get whatever you put into it. So yeah. if you really work hard, just just really do that. Like I said earlier, I've, I've in the first couple of years of making beats, like years, not even like first year, first couple of years of making beats, I didn't take any days off, and I and I did ten to maybe twenty beats a day sometimes, and mm. that's that that came you know that helped me a lot. Right. <laughs> that helped me a lot, and on top of that, I would highly recommend don't be a pushy idiot when you go to approach people about trying to create music <laughs> with them or anything because right. there are a lot of people who just aren't wired uh, with business savvy or uh, empathy they don't know how to put themselves in somebody else's shoe and see how somebody ticks like they don't understand it luckily I'm blessed with that so I know like how to not approach somebody and how to mm. approach somebody about things that I need or want and I, 
I uh, I think that's something you can't really teach somebody, but I would recommend be very, very thoughtful of how you approach people mm. that you want to help you know get you to the next level because um if you rub them the wrong way they're not gonna ever mess with you so yeah. be cool to people don't be an idiot don't be too over the top with it be very right. very cool when you go to hit people up about things right right and i and we was talking last night um we was you know just talking last night and one thing you mentioned was uh the whole thing of being committed you know oh committed. yeah 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 you know what I'm yeah saying? that's a good call man i'm glad yeah. i'm glad you yeah. brought that up yeah, yeah. like like I said last time we spoke, like, honestly, I feel like if somebody is going to fully commit to something, they're mm-hmm. they're going to get whatever they want. If they really mm-hmm. commit, they're going to get it. But if you don't commit and you, you're you thinking about having a little plan B in the back of your head or whatever, yeah. like, put it all on the table or don't do it at all because you're going to waste some people's time. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. really be committed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Uh, my last question, bro. Yeah. Um in your studio what is the one piece of equipment or software you cannot do without like you got to have this in your possession all the time i use a bunch of different things from actual physical equipment to different software but um you know and i use pro tools and that's super important one for song creation for me but at the end of the day for production Mm -hmm. if i don't have reason i need Mm -hmm. propeller head reason if i don't have reason I don't know how to make my drums knock in other, you know, facets yet. I don't know how to right. do that. But yeah. and, I, and I could learn, and I just don't. I haven't put the time into. It. But right, right now, if if Reason was to get banned and they were to come and take it out of everybody's <laughs> laptops and there's nothing online and all this stuff, yeah. Like right right now, like yeah, I'd have to like learn from scratch how to make my drums knock in different, you know, ways of diff- you know through different channels. Like I right. can't I can't do it any other way. Right. I just don't know. I've never tried. I've never experienced it. Right. So. Right, and, you, know, <laughs> you know what reason, I mean? Like, I need reason. Yeah, and reasons is when you when you you know when you think about reasons, um, I w- I I'd be safe to say, man, that they made that with the mind of sound design and um, they they made it they made it in that vein because man, you can manipulate your sound, yeah. you can manipulate your drums, you can dirty them up. You know, uh, one thing I love in reasons, man, I love the B threes, the organs in there. Yeah, like when I need that gritty, dirty organ, man, yeah. I will go pull up reasons uh, just for the organs at time, man. You you yeah. just can't beat them, man. So that's what's up, man. Shout out to Propellerhead yeah. Reasons. Uh, a good yep. friend of mine, he's a uh, Reasons ambassador. Like they oh, literally awesome. fly this dude across the world, man, to go um, do tutorials and you know do cool. stuff on their products. So, yeah, man, Jay, I appreciate you coming on the show, bro, for real. Thank you, Marv. Yeah, even in the midst of you being sick, man, <laughs> uh, I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, bro. For no real. doubt, man. And again, uh, you can go pick up that John Carpenter Jr. Kit exclusively over at MachineMasters.com. Uh, yes, you only got one week to get it. It is yep. prized at uh, no, 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 November the 1st. 11 yes, sir. and 12 o'clock it's out of there yep. so go get it it's going to be a collective item I don't even think Jay is going to even put that mug up again so no, nope, got I to won't. get it this week yeah <laughs> <laughs> again Jay I appreciate you coming on the show brother and I oh, hope you feel you so well much. too thank you brother I appreciate it you have a great day you too man and you've been listening to the show lab producer podcast where we talk about nothing but producer stuff yeah dig listening to the show lab producer podcast the podcast that's strictly for producers.